Hi, welcome to the March 13th status of the Electrogravity Project of Ethereal Mechanics. Uh, this is the path forward. Okay, I'm resuming the Electrogravity paper. Um, we're going to show you the release timeline. The Patreon folks are already familiar with the release timeline. Uh, the paper was actually started back in 2019 or 2020, I forget. Uh, but we had an interruption. I'll explain what the interruption was. We had something wrong with the electromagnetism. And I'll tell you in this video what will be the major change to look for going forward, and that's new electromagnetism V5. And I'm going to show that we're, we're going to reverse the order of explanation. I'll explain what that means in a minute. So what is going to be the entailment of the electrogravity paper? Well, it's begin, going to begin at the beginning with pretonics. And the pretonics are going to evolve into a model of pretonic model of matter. From there, we're going to derive the magnetic. From these two items, we're going to derive the magnetic field, the electric field, the gravitational field, and the inertia field. And we'll show that the inertial field is part of pretonics, and it's embedded in the pretonic model of matter. And that's, where, that's going to be the entailment of the electrogravity paper. This is the third paper in the electrogravity series. Okay, and for those who wish to get caught up, okay, let me open up a web browser here. Okay, go to distinti.com. This is my website. It still needs a lot more work, and I'm going to do some more work on it at my summer vacation, which is in July. Okay, if you want, go to the Ethereal Mechanics link here. This will bring you to the Ethereal Mechanics page. Okay, and we already have two papers out in the series. We have uh, Ethereal Mechanics 01, which is transvariance. This is a PDF paper. The paper is available right there at the link. And there's videos that support this on YouTube. And then e e Ethereal Mechanics uh, 02 is constructs. And the paper is here. Uh, this paper is going to be not the static gravity. This is going to be the electrogravity model. Uh, so this, the what paper we're talking about in this video is going to replace this one. This was going to be a shortened version, but we're going to expand on it a lot. If you want to see the legacy paper on gravity, go to this link here. This is a paper that's nearly 20 years old. Okay, but a lot of improvements uh, with the new model. So that's where we are right now. Now what you're also going to need, if you go back to the main page, is you're going to need Vortrix Algebra because all the math is going to be done. Here's paper four. I don't have much description here, but the paper is very long and very complete. There will be a software release to go with it. I think it's already available to the Patreon members. If you look at Vortrix Algebra, I think there is a software release. Or if not, let me know. I'll post it. Okay, so there's the people that want to get caught up to where we're going so that when the videos come out later, and we'll show you the timeline in a minute here. Okay, so what happened in the past? I tried to explain this electrogravity going from what humankind already knew, trying to go down the rabbit hole to pretonics and the pretonic model of matter. The problem is we kind of had a little error in magnetism. You can see the by the little teeth prints of something cut out. And that caused a problem and that eventually said that we had to figure out why that we had that disconnect was there and then that put a stop to the paper. And that led to the research for new electromagnetism V5, which resolved the problem. But now then we have a corrected model of magnet, new electromagnetism V5, which changes the model of matter. And then we, in order to kind of explain all this going from what humans know down the rabbit hole, we also had to explain the gravitational and field in terms of a simple model, ether model. But to justify the simple ether model, we had to ex expand through the advanced ether model and show all the cosmological predictions that it gets right before we can then justify using the simple ether model. And this whole thing just became a total quagmire trying to explain it going from what humans know to the going down the rabbit hole. Because it would, the whole this course took me 20 years to figure out all of the weird convolutions, contortions, things we got wrong. And that's why I've decided that we're going to do it the proper way. We're going to start at the beginning. This is going to be totally alien to anybody that has been ex explained physics using the classical or mainstream theory. It's going to be totally alien to you. And we're going to derive the normal things that you see. So we're going to end up, we're not going to start from what you are comfortable with. We're going to end up where, where you're comfortable with. 
okay and this is going to be the electrogravity paper that's going to be split off into two follow-on papers this is new electromagnetism uh, version 5 applications paper which will show you how to take the new electromagnetism v5 equations and how to run simple experiments with magnets wire and glue and get the same answers you can get with classical theory and then there'll be a simple model of light i don't know if this will be included in the paper or it'll be a follow-on paper but that's that's we're going to have a simple model of light and this is going to include the models for refraction reflection diffraction absorption and coupling and again that's just going to be simplified models Okay, and then there's going to be the cosmology, cos ethereal mechanics cosmology paper where we're going to introduce the advanced ether model and show you that you don't need all the dark matter to explain the behaviors of galaxies. And, and we're going to show stellar aberration. We're going to show um, the precession of Mercury. We're going to explain all of that stuff and things that you would not even imagine that scientists are totally oblivious to that are right in front of our face. It is so, when I came with this, I'm like, oh my God, this thing that scientists completely ignore is right in front of our face. It's a big telltale that the ether has a property that they're totally oblivious to. That, But anyway, I'm not going to go on to that. But now all this assumes, so this is going to be, this is going to be coming out hopefully mid-2022 or 2022. This will probably take me to the end of 2022, and this will probably take all of 2023. Okay, there's a lot of work here, and a part of that problem is I'm doing this all alone, all by myself. That's why I'm going to come up here and make the sad story that if I can get more Patreon folks, okay, right now I have 55 Patreon folks. If I can get to 1,000 Patreon folks, even giving me, oh, I don't know, 5 or $10 a month, then I could do this 100% full-time and even hire somebody to help me take care of some of the other work, like producing videos and stuff. But it don't matter. I'm going to do it either way. Okay, but again, I'm not going to be able to do it full-time because I'm, my, my number one Patreon that's supplying this is, my, uh, is me. So my full-time job is my number one uh, contributor. So if you guys can help remove that burden, I can do this much quicker, much faster. So any help you can give is great. And I thank my Patreon folks. But let's get on to um, what's five years into the future. So after we get done with all of this, the follow-on papers are where we're going to start getting bearing the fruit of this whole thing. Because now we're going to be going down the rabbit hole. See, the pretonics is the beginning of the rabbit hole for going up toward the galaxy. Okay, so going back down, the more subtle thing is ethonics. So we're going to take the advanced ether model pretonics and go down the rabbit hole to the more subtle fundamental physics, which is the behavior of the ether. This will be the even more advanced ether model, which will describe how the pretonic fields are contained and set up, how they are manifested in the ether, the nonlinearity behaviors of the ether, all that stuff. From that information, we're going to split out into the advanced model of light where we're going to finally use a Helmholtz solution to light okay and we're going to learn behaviors of the ether and things i've released to in the earlier videos so i'm going to show you a lot of those predictions were true some were wrong some are true that's okay as long as we just keep going and and fixing stuff as we go we're going to get to the right answers eventually okay and we're finally we're going to show how a radiometer actually works yes there's a simple experiment uh, analogy experiment that is so simple and beautiful that the scientists are going to face palm themselves at how simple the theory of a radiometer is. Okay, there's another thing in here. I do not want to release this yet because this is a very much speculation. But the more important, the holy grail of this whole thing is electroinertia. This will be our starship propulsion. And this is going to rely on basically using pretonics and changing the behavior of the ether to produce electroinertia in order to produce propulsion in starships. That's the number one goal of this whole thing because we need to get people off this planet. Okay, and it has to be here because when you see, when you go down the rabbit hole over here and you see how pretonics, all this predicts all the behaviors of matter from energy to inertia to mass to uh, electric and magnetic and gravitational fields. Every aspect of matter and nature can be predicted from the behavior of pretons 
reacting with the ether. Therefore, if electromagnetic propulsion exists, it should exist here. There, there has to be a method to do this. Okay, I don't have I only have bits and pieces of all this, but I have enough bits and pieces right now to know that this is going to it may not happen in this order. Okay, I don't know if these are going to be included in this or this is going to be three follow-on papers. Uh, because once we start getting here, there's going to be a lot more pieces filled out. We may learn other things that are even more important to us before we get to here. We'll find out. Okay, again, this is going to be about five years into the future at the current rate that I have time available to me outside of my full-time job. Yes, I'm complaining again. Yes, I am. Okay, so here's the near-term timeline. My Patreon folks are already aware of this timeline. The only difference that I changed is I was going to release the physics software early, but right now the physics software has the version 5 equations in it, and I'm not going to release that to anybody until the paper, the electrogravity paper, has been copyrighted and reviewed by the first officers. Just so you know, these are my Patreon tiers. Passengers are $5 a month, then it's $10 a month, $20 a month, $30, and $50 a month. Okay. Um, so a lot of my first officers have been with me since the beginning, and a lot of them are great. They said, we don't care about our tier benefits. You're doing great work. Get to the end. We're happy to support you. If I can get a, another whole crap load of people like that, this job, this thing will go much faster. And anyway, but thank you. I appreciate those people tremendously. Um, so anyway, so in the coming months of March and April, we're going to, I'm going to be writing the electrogravity paper, and then I'm going to copyright it and put it out for the first officer review. After the first officer review, we're going to publish the PDF to Patreon members and, and above. Okay, At that time, the physics software will be released to engineers and above. Uh, at the same time, uh, beginning here, I'm going to take care of a lot of the tier benefits. I'm going to do the experimental data schematic and other software releases while I'm writing the paper. Once I'm done writing the paper, before I release the paper, I'm going to start with making the video series. And we're going to make good quality videos. These are probably going to take two weeks of production each and put in all the animations, all the pictures, everything. I've tried to put music in there. Do the best I possibly can to make these the best video quality uh, that I, I can do. Okay, so I'm not going to rush these because these are important. They're getting the points across here. But these will be available to passengers above on July 4th. Third, which is the mid midpoint of my summer vacation, all of this stuff is going to be publicly released, except possibly the physics software. I don't know. I might publicly release that, or I might leave it another six months for the engineers before I make that a public release. We'll see how that goes. But they've but all of the videos and the PDF paper will all be publicly released on July 3rd. Now, this date may move a week or two, depending on the other items I have to do here, but that's generally the timeline. So don't hold me exactly to the date. It's going to be sometime in the middle of summer. Okay, so, and then after that paper is released, then we go into writing the new electromagnetism V5 applications paper and start development on the Physics 2 software. The Physics 2 software will be modeling three-dimensional solids. This software, the original physics software, just does filamentary wires and point charges. It's very simple, but it's enough to get the job done. Okay, and then again, after July 3rd, all of these videos will be released. I uh, will release them onto the website, the distinti.com website, and we will link to them. Um, and But we'll make them public for everybody. This July 4th needs to be updated. Okay, there's only one issue only one issue I still can't explain the ripple okay and people say oh that's a small anomaly and I'll show you what the, the second rule of acquisition tells us about anomalies okay uh, for this paper why aren't you running come on run this is supposed to run okay now there it goes so when the magnet is here we see the ripple when the magnet goes around the back side where there's no wire we don't see as much ripple. We just pretty much see noise. Don't worry, this is going to keep going, and then it's going to update with the other types of armatures. Um, how do I stop it? Stop. Well, I'm just going to let it run. So what's happening is when the magnet is over the wire of the D, we get 45 microvolts of ripple. What you see here is the 
the, the black, the gold, and the blue are all the three different theories that all agree on this experiment. So this isn't a problem, uh, and black is the, the new electromagnetism V5. And the, I already tried an experiment where I took the magnet and wiggled it back and forth over the wire and, you know, under a sinusoidal acceleration, and that produces something both in simulation and in measurement, but it's not enough to explain the 45 microvolts of ripple. And it has to be the magnet coupling with the wire here because on the backside where there was no wire, this, this image changed, there was no wire on the backside, we get no coupling. And this isn't noise because the next time it comes around, you see the exact same ripple. The red is the measured data. Red is the measured data. And you see every time it comes around, the ripple looks exactly the same. Okay, so this isn't noise. This is a mode, I'm very sure, this is a mode of the vibration of the experiment which is coupling to the experiment. And I've already done one mode of experiment and that wasn't conclusive. That's where the magnet is vibrating along the axis of rotation. Okay, we still have the vibration of mode up and down and vibration toward and out from the center. Okay, I, I, I'm going to come up with another experiment to try those other modes in one shot, but that's going to be a big build. And I don't want to slow up the making of the paper to build that. Okay, and we have to explain this. The, the, the rules of acquisition do not let us ignore this. And here's what the rules of acquisition say. Beware, even the smallest anomaly can be the harbinger of catastrophic change. It does not matter how subtle the anomaly is. Don't ignore them. Bypass them if you need to. That's what we're doing to make progress. But don't forget about them. A true theory of everything can have not a single anomaly. And 2.0 is anomalies are the mother of scientific progress. Necessity is the mother, blah, blah. You can read the rest of this on your own. Okay, so uh, to recap, so YouTube subscribers will not see any ethereal mechanics related posts until July. I may have other small videos about equipment reviews and updates to the rules of acquisition and things like that, but no ethereal mechanic related posts until July. Okay, Patreon passengers and above will start seeing the electrogravity videos as early as May. Okay, I'm not expecting any other problems other than the beginning of World War III. Okay, that's the only thing that's going to stand in the way of this. But unfortunately, that every day looks like it's going to be more and more reality with this stupid nonsense going on in the world. And I want to thank my Patreon folks for their steadfast support. Uh, the links to the Patreon, to the blog, and to my website are in the low bar. But here's the Patreon. You can get there by either way. I'm not sure if this works. For some reason on my computer, this doesn't work, but it's supposed to work. This definitely works. So thank you very much.